In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called design a memory file system. So basically, the goal is we want to design a data structure that implements a, or simulates an in-memory system uh, file system. So implement this file system class that supports these following functions. So in this case, we're basically have a constructor that initializes the object, the system. And we also have this ls function, basically um, do a couple things here. So if the it takes a path right in a string format, and if the path is a file path, right, returns a list that only contains this file's name. Okay. And if it's a directory path, we want to return the list of file and directory names in this directory. So the answer should be lexical graphical order. Uh, basically, we want to uh, return a list right of string that contains either the file name if it's a file path if it's a directory path we want to return all the files as well as directory names under the current directory right in sorted order of course um, and then you can also see here we have mkdir it takes the path and then it makes a direct new directory according to the given path so the given pa directory path does not exist if the middle directories in the path does, do not exist, we should create them. So basically what we're gonna do is that we're basically just going to create this path, right? This 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 path. Um, so for example, if we have something like this, we wanna create A, we wanna create B, we wanna create C, each of them is our directory. And then B is under the A directory, C is under the B directory, right? So, and then we also have add content to file. So it takes the file path and the content. So what we're basically doing is we take this file path that's already exist, right? If the, if the file path, uh, path does not exist, create the file path containing the given content. But if it exists, we basically just uh, appends the given content to the original content, right? Um, and then we also have another function called read content from file. So this takes a file path, returns the content in that file. Right, so the file path should be existed. Okay, um, so you can see here we have an example. Right, so initially we initialize the class, uh, we create an instance of this class, and then in this case we're calling this ls function. We basically pass in a directory. In this case is the root directory. There's nothing under this root, so we return a list. Right, empty list. So then we create this path. So we have abc. So in this case, we create a directory A, create a directory B, B is under A, C is under B, right? And then in this case, you can see here is a void function. We're not returning anything. So once we create this directory, and then we're going to add a content, add content to this to the file. In this case, it's A, B, C. And then we are creating the last one right there is a D. That's basically a file, right? This file basically we have a content that we're going to append onto it, right? So you can see here, uh, this is the file name, and then this is the content. So we're basically creating that, right? And then you can also see FS, uh, sorry, uh, LS, we're basically going to um, call this function. We are getting this directory, right? Which is under the root directory. So only directory A is in the root, is in the directory root, right? So then if I want to read content from the file, um, you can see here, it will return us hello, right? Because here you can see D, we already assigned hello there. So the output is the file and the content. And then you can see here the constraints is that um, we're guaranteed to have um, path and file path are absolute path, which begins with this, not end with this, except the path is just this, right? And you can see here that uh, you're, you can assume that all the directory names and file names only contain lowercase letters and the same names will not exist in the same directory. Uh, you can assume that all the operations will be passed as the valid parameters and users will not attempt to retrieve file and content or list of directory or file that does not exist. So basically a couple of things that I want to clarify for this question. Um, first of all, for each and every single path right either a path or a file path you can see this is our path right this can be a string right it, this, this can be a, a long word it doesn't have to be one character i didn't really know that when i first tried to do this question so in this case like for each directory or for each file name i could have more than one 
characters, right? I could have slash A, B, C, D, slash D, uh, B, C, D, or whatever. Like it could be a long words. It doesn't have to be one character. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing that we have to pay attention to is this add content to file function. Um, and the other thing that we have to pay attention to is that when we're creating this, when we're add content to this file, maybe we have to create this directory or we don't, right? We append the string onto the content that we have already onto this, onto this current existing content, right? If there is, if there is content for this file, right? For this file D, then we just have to append hello right after that content, right? If there is not, if there's no content, then we just have to put this as the content for this file, right? So basically this add content doesn't mean that we have to replace what we have before, right? For this file, we're basically just append this content onto uh, what we have in this file, right? So that's another thing that we have to clarify. Um, so other than that, um, let's take a look at how, can, how we can be able to solve this, right? So of course, like the brute force approach will probably be that we are just going to store each and every single path onto a, like a, some kind of like a table, right? And let's say if I want to, you know, for example, if I want to create a directory, I will just say, this is the path and then I will, I will create it in our table, right? And then add map or add content, I will just, same thing, I will just, you know, create it um, and then just return and, and then just add it onto our, our table, add a row onto our table, right? But let's say if I want to do LS in this case, if I want to find, all the file, uh, all the file um, path, or all the directories um, under the current uh, path, then I have to check for each and every single rows, right? Each and every single um, keys uh, prefix to see if it match. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to go to our table, and then for each and every single key, we basically have to check for, um, you know, for its prefix to see if the current path um, is the prefix of our current key, right? And then if our current key is a directory, right? Is it, is it, is it, there's a directory under this path, right? So in this case, you can see we have to iterate through the entire table to do so. So what we can do instead is we can basically use a try data structure, right? To basically avoid checking each and every single key's prefix in our table. So in this case, let's say this is our path, right? We want to create this, you know, we want to create this path. In this case, we can basically have a try. In this case, let's say this is our try, right? Uh, you, you can see that this is one file uh, or this is one directory. And then you can see that there's two directories under this, this directory. So in this case, you can see we can basically use a try to uh, store our, our files, right? Our, our directories uh, in a trial, in a try, right? In this case, let's say the last one right here, let's say this ABD is a um, is a file, right? What we can do is that inside our our try class, right? What we can do is that we can have a variable called content, right? If the content is, uh, initially content is null. If it is not null, basically we know that this, this node, right, has a content, right? So in this case, if I want to um, basically realize that this node has a content, then we can just return a list only contain the, the file's name, right? If the path is a directory path, let's say this doesn't have a content, right? Let's say B doesn't have a content, is not a content, uh, or not a file path. In this case, what we can do is we can return the list of files and a directory names in this directory. So in this case, we have C and D, right? So in this case, I'm gonna show you two approach how we can solve this problem. But for each approach, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons for each of them. So you can see here that what I'm trying to do here is inside our file system class is that I have a root, which is basically the root node. And then you can see we have a try node. And this try node, you can see here, we have two variables. So one is the content. Initially, we have null. And then we also have children. In this case, we have a table that keep track of uh, current nodes children, right? The string is basically the current directory's name, and then we have try node, which is basically the, the, the children, right, um, of that directory, right? So, and then you can see here, we have our ls function, we takes the, it takes the path, and then basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to 
get to the correct node, right? So let's say the path is equal to a b, right? Let's say if the path is equal to slash a slash b, then in this case, we're going from the roots, we're going down to a and then go down to b, right? We want to get to the, the last node. And then once we're at the last node, what we're going to do is we're going to get all the keys that we have for this node. And then we're going to sort it, right? Because we want to, you know, we want to have a uh, return a list that is in lexical order, right? We're basically in a uh, increasing order, uh, sort of increasing sorted order, right? For our string, and then we're returning this children, right? And let's say if the path does equal to, you know, this thing, right? Which is still okay. Like we're basically at the root, and then we're just going to return, you know, the current, all the children for the current node, right? In this case, it's just A right and we're basically add a onto the list and then we're returning that right we're sorting and uh, and then returning that right and then if i want to create a directory in this case it takes a path and then what, what we're going to do is we're going to split by this string right and then basically here you can see we're basically starting at index one because if we are splitting by the uh you know the slash that in this case the first index right the first element in the array is basically going to be empty right empty string and then what we're going to do is that we're going to start to traversing the tree right starting from traversing the try so we have current string array at i and then we check to see if it contains if it doesn't contain we create that in that uh create that element in the table and then we're basically traversing right so in this case let's say if the path again if it's a b c right we're going to start from the roots go from here here and here right pretend that, you know, B, C is not there before, right? So that's what we're basically doing. And then at the end, you can see we also have another function at content to file, which is also pretty easy, right? You get an idea, we're basically creating that path if it's not there. And then if current.content is not null, then we basically just add that content, add the current content onto it. If it's null, we basically just set the current node's content to be content. For reading content from the file, it's pretty much similar, right? We're basically get to that node. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna return the current node's content, right? So that's basically it, which is pretty simple. Um, but you can see that the core function is here, right? Where basically you can see the time complexity um, for this, right? Well, basically when we try to get to this node, in this case, it's basically just M, right? M is basically how many uh, or basically the longest uh, path, right? Or the path, right, is basically is basically the path that we have to traverse, right? We basically have to traverse each and every single, uh, kind of like each and every single string that we have in our path, right? Or in this case, if we want, we want to traverse each and every single directory, right, in our path, once we get to the last directory, uh, we have to do our sorting, right? And this, current directory could have many directories under this directory. So in this case, we have to perform a sorting in this case is going to be uh, depends on how many um, elements that this directory has, right? Let's say we have k number of elements that is going to be k log k, right? So you can see the time complexity for this is basically going to be m plus k log k, right? So in, in this case, you can see here, um, this is this is basically the time complexity for this. And then for other functions, right? Um, basically, you can see that we're basically just going to um, going to create this directory. So it's going to basically M, right? Basically, M is basically the size of our path. Same thing for this one, as well as this one, right? Basically, we're traversing down this file path or directory path. And then we're, you know, changing some stuff, right? Um, and then that's it. But let's say, but there's also another way we can solve this problem to use a tree map, right? A tree map basically is kind of like a hash map, but we're basically just going to keep the tree, right? Keep all the elements in our tree in a sort of, sort of manner, right? But time complexity for, you know, adding elements, removing elements, and then checking to see if a key exists is going to be a log n, right? Because this, uh, this, this tree map, basically uses and then basically you can see that the, the tree map implements red black tree which is basically a self balancing binary search tree right and we know that for insertion and deletion in binary search tree where binary tree is basically just going to be log in so therefore 
um, if we were to solve this problem using a using a tree map, right? Um, the time complexity for you know insertion and delete and reading elements or basically traversing down this path, right? For example, mostly those two functions, uh, add content. We basically if it's, if the the current node doesn't have the string, then we basically have to insert it, right? Which is basically a log in or log k time complexity, right? Um, and then you can see here, k is basically the the size of our current node's node's tree map size, right? And then we basically have to traverse down this file path. And but for this function, in this case, because this is already sorted, we're basically all we're trying to do is we're trying to go down to the correct path. And then we're just going to uh, get its children. So you can see the time complexity is basically just m, which is basically how many directories that we have to go down to, right? So you can see that each and every single solution has its pros and cons. If we're using a tree map for insertion is basically going to be a, uh, you know, uh, kind of like, sorry, m times log k. And then for ls function, in this case, we're basically just going to have m, right? Or bagel of m, right? Because the tree map is already sorted, and all we have to do here is basically just getting its children, right? So that's basically how we're going to solve the problem, and thank you for watching.